Hey, LinkedIn, and welcome to Business Unusual. This is a new live show concept that we are testing out on the platform to bring you real-time insights and updates into how the coronavirus is impacting how we all work. I'm your host, Caroline Fairchild, and if you can't tell from the setup behind me, I am working from home. LinkedIn is one of several companies, a growing list, that is asking their workers to work from home as a way to spread the, as a way to curb the spread of the disease. So this is where I will be with you for the next coming weeks. We want this show to be a space where we can work through these uncertain times together. We're seeing thousands of you on LinkedIn talking about how coronavirus is impacting the way that you work. And we want to have a conversation about that on this show. Let's talk about it here. Tell us what's going on in your world through the comments in the stream. There is so much for us to talk about today. We ended the workday yesterday with a rough plan of what we thought we were gonna to talk to you about today on the show, and we ripped that up, which to me is really a comment of how fast COVID-19 is moving and how much news there really is about it. President Trump imposed a 30-day travel ban for most of Europe and says he wants to introduce financial relief for workers affected by the virus. The NBA canceled the remainder of its season, and I just got word before we went live that the Major League Soccer League is also imposing a 30-day ban. And we have news from Hollywood that Tom Hanks, someone that a lot of people on this stream probably have heard of, has contracted the disease while on set. We're going to get right into it with my colleague, Joe Mylord. Joe covers a range of industries for us on LinkedIn, from frontline workers, the gig economy, to sports. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. So, Joe, thanks for joining us. Let's start with the NBA. This was such huge news last night. Now Major League Soccer is following suit. What are you hearing? Tell us what this really means. Well, it just shows how fast moving of a situation we have here for pretty much all businesses, sports included, where just a couple of days ago we heard different leagues, the NCAA, NBA itself, go from considering playing games to concerning playing games with our fans to now, in some cases, not playing at all. And what I think is really key to uh, look into here is the fact that these decisions are happening from the top down, but levels below that, there's a lot of confusion still as well. I heard from a friend last night who works at the uh, Major League Soccer League office who says herself that she doesn't know when, if at all, any of the workers there at the league office themselves will be able to work from home. I heard from someone who works at Madison Square Garden that supports the Knicks and the New York Rangers and the uh, National Hockey League uh, ticket sales. They don't know as well whether they will have to work from home. So from right now, it's a fast moving situation. Uh, I can suspect that we'll hear news hour by hour about plans for these different leagues and what they'll be doing going forward. Right, the news just keeps coming. But what about the supporting businesses? This obviously doesn't just impact the players and the fans. What are we hearing from workers on the platform about this? Right, well, you, there's a lot of people in the food service industry and a lot of frontline workers that support these leagues and to support these games. And what I've heard across some industries, a lot of people in our land part-time work is that they're very blunt about the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, quotes like, how can I make money if I'm not at work? Uh, I asked one worker, what would happen uh, if the situation gets really bad? Quote, if it comes to that, I'll just be going to work as well. So there's a lot of blunt reactions to the fact that there's just simply as an infrastructure for people to take precautions and stay home from work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you see reactions from people like Mark Cuban last night, who highlighted in his press conference after the NBA canceled the season that we have to find something to do for these workers. I suspect other owners and other leagues and other teams will try to figure out what that something is, as have other businesses tried to do so outside of sports. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're seeing the government step in. In some cases, President Trump in his address last night did say that he is going to take actions to provide emergency support for those who are affected for the government workers. And in California, there is a measure in San Jose to ensure that people who are infected by the crisis don't get evicted. But this all sounds very supportive. But as we both know, this will be slow moving. Are workers being impacted now? How are they responding to this? Right. Well, I think that the most telling way in which uh, workers are impacted is the fact that they are on the front lines of our preparation or the general public's preparation to be as cautious as possible. So what I first heard last week from workers is, what is it like looking at stores, the, the, the way that stores are trying to ensure that they're stocked, about, mostly about the rush. And then but also there's a conversation about what could happen going forward. And uh, like I said, uh, there's a lot of blunt reactions around just because of the fact that there is a lack of paid sick leave for certain people in certain industries uh, around the US. But also one thing that should not be underestimated is the fact that there is a lot of skepticism and a lot of 
reason that people might find to have mistrust in the, in the news that they're hearing, to have a skepticism about whether this is actually as big of a deal as it might seem. And these workers, they in the face of skepticism, they can't hedge our bets like people who can telework in different industries. They might just play on the safe side for them and keep going to work. You mentioned that these workers are on the front lines for our preparation, and some of them have joined us on the stream right now. We have a comment from Ashley, who's a pharmacist, and she says she's having to calm down the social media frenzy, but she's trying to protect patients in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Ashley, thank you for joining us on the stream. Joe, for those who are on the stream who are working from home or perhaps aren't on the front lines, what can they do to support frontline workers right now? Well, I'd imagine that there's going to be a demand for specifically gig workers, couriers who are bringing supplies and food uh, back to different people's homes. Um, and in fact, we've seen uh, actual reporting that indicates that services like Instacart and Lyft have had higher demand in the past week as people try to go for private services. And in those instances, I would imagine that some customers might feel compelled to support uh, workers and, and provide a tip, uh, support them financially, be as polite as possible. We've seen stories from the past year with a scandal with DoorDash uh, or a scandal with other gig services about how tipping is a controversial issue. Um, this might be the time in which that we can use that uh, medium to support them. In, in All right, so if you can over tip right now, this is a great time to do it. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, my colleague Susie Jackson is joining us to talk about another group of workers that is right on the front lines of COVID-19 and that's flight attendants. We're hearing from a lot of them on the platform right now. Hey Susie, thanks for joining us. Hey Caroline, thanks for having me. That is right. We are hearing from a lot of people in the airline industry, uh, even before the Trump announcement last night of the 30 day travel ban from countries in Europe, excluding Great Britain. Um, we are hearing different things, though. From some flight attendants, we're hearing that the airports they're walking through on their way to their flights are ghost towns. Um, yet some others are saying their routes seem unaffected. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, maybe that's going to keep developing and changing now with this ban plus Maybe those were routes that were really well-traveled uh, by business customers who are increasingly being asked to work from home, to pull out of conferences, et cetera. We're gonna have to keep watching to see how that goes. Uh, one thing that is very clear though, is that flight attendants are made from some tough stuff. The sentiment we're, he we're seeing from many of them commenting on LinkedIn is that they are used to germs. They are used to dealing with the public. They're used to washing their hands and taking care of themselves uh, in close spaces. With, with people who are sick, with people who need help and assistance. Um, so they're not worried about that. They're not worried about getting sick themselves. What they are worried about is the industry and the economy itself. So we have a comment up here from Pandora who says she's not concerned about the virus. She knows how to wash her hands. She never touches her face until she's able to wash her hands. Something I'm having trouble doing right now is not touching my face. Her concern though is the reduction of schedules and possible layoffs. She tells us she worked for Alaska Airlines, who fortunately has um, some systems in place that have prevented that kind of action in the past. And uh, we hope that she continues to, to feel comforted by that in their response in the future. We're seeing from uh, Janine, who's another flight attendant, also echoing that she's more concerned about the economy than her own health or the health of anyone that she knows. Um, her compatriot, Kim, works with, for South by, excuse me, Southwest Air. And she makes a great point that the airline industry was already hit pretty hard last year with the grounding of the Boeing Max jets. So coming off of that, they're still trying to sort out that story. Uh, here comes coronavirus to just throw everything into a tailspin. And that's that's her pun, not mine. She actually says that she finds airplanes to be very clean right now. I think some of our germaphobe colleagues, Caroline, would disagree with that. But I'm going to take Kim at her word as a professional. She is seeing more and more passengers board planes with masks on. She is seeing them bring their own disinfectant wipes and thoroughly clean down their seats over and over, more than she's ever seen seats be cleaned before. So she feels safer now from contracting any sort of germ than she ever has. What she's really afraid of uh, is the threat of layoffs. Another flight attendant on the platform, Lori, actually has a bit of a different take on it. She says that the flights and routes that she's on are mostly full. She is servicing probably warmer climates as she's seeing a lot of spring breakers who are still filling up the airplanes. And as someone who was in her 20s once and went on spring break, I understand that's a tough crowd to deter. Um, younger people think that they're invincible, and I'm sure that they are still going to their warmer climates in droves. Uh, what I do think is interesting about that story is everything we've heard this week about universities and their responses to the virus. They are canceling classes. They're holding them virtually. There are questions about graduation. Uh, will graduation ceremonies still take place? 
And aside from that, just being really a bummer for students who have worked so hard for years and now might not be able to graduate in person with their peers, it's also a, a business story. Campus recruiting is huge in the spring for companies and for students looking to get their first job, looking to fill their pipelines. So it'll be really interesting to watch this story and, and see what develops. All right, Susie. Well, thank you so much for that. My two big takeaways are your social media feed might be filled with pictures of empty flights. I know that mine is right now, but the airline industry is still churning away. And those flight attendants, they have bun a bunch of precautions in place to make sure that the planes are staying clean. So thank you for sharing those perspectives. Thank you, Caroline. We are seeing so much of you talking about talking about these issues in the stream right now. I want to read some member comments that I'm seeing. Uh, Nez says, I've been running my consulting agency online and implementing video conferencing tools such as Zoom. I've been working from home for years. If anyone has any questions or help to transition to remote, to remote, remote work, Nez says you can find him in the stream. So be sure and do that. We're also getting some questions as well. Richard is asking, what is LinkedIn's role in promoting best workplace practices for business leaders who have no guidance? Um, is LinkedIn and a good resource for that. Richard, we're, we're glad that you joined us and are asking that question. We've been going deep on how professionals can stay productive right now working from home. There are tons of insights that you can check out either in the daily rundown or by going to the right of your LinkedIn newsfeed. We have news stories there that include tips for staying productive. Um, as I'm working from home right now, I've been trying to follow along. Uh, some of the ones that I've been catching my ear are make sure that you make time for lunch. Uh, it sounds simple, but bringing some structure and organization to your day has been really important. I've Failed at doing that the last couple of days, but I'm trying to do that today. Uh, small things like getting dressed for work and kind of maintaining that professional identity is also important to staying productive. And make sure you have a good workspace. You might need to get another monitor. Uh, don't work while laying down is another pretty good tip. Um, but we hope to use this show as a way to continue to keep you guys informed if you are working from home right now and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm Caroline Fairchild. This has been Business Unusual. If you have ideas for what you want us to cover on this show, let us know in the stream or post something on LinkedIn using hashtag business unusual. And we'll see you again next time.